were on an almost continuous cycle of Nandrolone for 20 years. Yeah, 15 or 20 years, yeah, memory correct me. A lot of those viewers in the comments and on Facebook all ask us, why did they stop? Why did they stop? Were there any side effects? Why did I stop? Yeah, after uh, those 15 years. Well... This is the TRT and Hormone Optimization YouTube channel. And if you want to learn all about the science-based information on this topic, consider subscribing, hit that notification bell, and you'll be on your way. Before we listen to Dr. Jeffrey Rutterbusch's answer, let's first listen again to the original interview he gave June 2019 about his 15 to 17 years DECA cycle. Uh, yeah, again, I have a lot of experience with this medication myself, uh, both from the bro science and dosing. And I was probably on 100 to 200 milligrams a week of Nandrolone for 15 years, maybe more, maybe 17 or 18 years. Um, Continuously. Yes, sir. Continuously. I never took holidays. You're not talking cycles like most bros online do. Uh-uh, I was cruising. I was cruising on these doses for almost two decades. I'm still alive and feel great. Okay, so and what is the main purpose in bodybuilding? It's, it, it's one of the most powerfully anabolic and minimally androgenic hardening, cutting and uh, anabolics out there. Um, you know, have nandrolone, you have nandrolone decanoate or, or deca D. It has the one of the things I like about it is that it's a high anabolic effect, low androgenic effect, virtually no estrogenic effects. Um, it does, however, uh, it can it can at high doses cause gyno. So, usually, that's why I was on the tamoxifen, and I always subscribe for my guys who are on high doses, it does have a negative effect on the lipid profile. But again, that's why I would like adding it to my guys on high doses, because of, I mean, sorry, the tamoxifen, because that would help with balancing the lipid profile. Um, one of the um, most powerful stacks, I heard the word stack, uh, decadurabulin and D-ball stack. It's been around forever. Now, what is the usual dose of DECA? Well, two to four hundred milligrams. In my travels around the world, two to four hundred is the average dose. You can do a little less. We'll talk about that a little, a little later down the line here. Some guys do more. I know guys are doing six to eight hundred milligrams of DECA every week in addition to two or three thousand milligrams of testosterone. Yes. That's a right. Two or yeah. three thousand milligrams of testosterone weekly with six to eight hundred milligrams of decadurabolin um, a week. And why are most people talking about cycles and are you talking about decades? Yeah, no, I, I've taught now these are cycles. These are guys who are doing cycles. But you know, the more a guy stays on anabolics. And the more he feels good, the better results he gets, the, the less the off cycles get. And the longer the cycles become, to the point that nobody takes hardly any holidays anymore. That's why you can talk about this cruising and blasting. Even got, I don't know anybody right now, nowhere I recommend anybody who's been on high doses, or doing replacement therapy. I would not recommend anybody getting off. So that's a relative term, where you blast and where you cruise. Um, I remember years ago, a blast dose is would be considered today a cruising dose. It's all coming, it's all relative, coming up. And cycles are, are, are long term. So when you talk about Blasting and cruising, I know we're getting ahead of it, but it's part of what we want to talk about today. Um, the usual 
cruising dose of nandrolone is 100 milligrams a week. The blast dose is, as I said, two to 400 megs a week. But I've seen guys do upwards of six to 800 milligrams a week with no long-term detriment. All we watch for is the, you know, hematocrit and hemoglobin. We look for mainly, you know, uh, liver, uh, liver enzymes. We watch lipid profiles. And that's the only thing I've had to watch for guys who are doing long-term blasting, cruising, call it what you like. The terms are relative today. One guy's blast, another man's cruise. One guy's cruise, another man's blast. What is the main downside of DECA? I have heard that it gives a lot of water retention, a lot of mass, but because of you hold up all the water in the muscles, uh, that's not real muscle tissue. Is that right? I have not found that to be the case for DECA. Personally, I did not experience that. I, I found, personally, I would retain more water on higher dose testosterone than I did with Decadurable. Now, you've heard of the famous Decadip. You know, the, 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 the fact that it would diminish your sex drive. I didn't experience that. For 15 years on high doses Decadurable, and I had an, a significant drive that was never minimized. It's only when I tried coming off those higher doses, you know, give myself a holiday, that I would notice my libido crash. Therefore, my off cycles were never off cycles. They were just cruising. I had to maintain some cruise dose so I wouldn't crash my libido. So, I, no, I have not found the high doses of DECA create water retention. It's just been my personal experience that you can get the, uh, the, uh, the DECA dick. And again, that wasn't not my personal experience, but I've had guys tell me, you know, they come in gym and they tell me they have experienced it. Uh, you know, Stephen is so much that behind a man's erections. You cannot ever really, I think, thoroughly or completely blame one element for putting a man's libido in the dirt. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just a complicated phenomenon. Mm -hmm. libido and sex drive yeah, I mean so. the endocrine disruptors there's the stress cortisol levels there's nutritional intake there's sleep and there's attractiveness to your mate there's spats all the time there's financial duress kids I mean these things all come into play when it comes to your erectile function so back to Nandalone I never experienced it and I never experienced significant water retention. Doesn't mean it, it it doesn't occur, just that I never experienced it, and most of my guys never experienced it. The only side effect that would you would tell me about occasionally is the deck of dick. Okay, I understand. Um, and when you're taking Nandrolone or DECA, uh, is there always a base of TRT there, or uh, do you call it a cycle of testosterone? Yeah, I would. I've known of guys that have just solely, you know, uh, nandrolone monotherapy. But no, I was always taking it with testosterone. You know, I, I'll tell you exactly how I stopped. <laughs> because um, I was getting on the underground. Even as a physician, I couldn't get a doctor to write it for me. So I was getting on the underground. Sorry to say, guys, but I got it on the underground market. Then I came above board and, you know, took my HOT uh, program uh, to physicians and they said, no, that's not a bioidentical. I'm, I'm not going to grab that for you. So I mainly went off, you know, low dose Nandrolone because I wasn't able to acquire it above board. Mm -hmm. Okay. And in all those years, I remember you telling us uh, you didn't even check your blood, your uh, lipids. Well, no, my, I would, I would get an annual physical, flight physical, and, uh, you know, they would run my H&H, &H, my creatine, and my BUN, and the usual baseline meds, uh, sorry, labs, lipid profile and liver functions, and they were always normal. Everything was always normal, but, you know, the 
physicals I was subjected to, you know, wasn't testing total or free testosterone or, or DHEA or DHT or estrogen. This flew under the radar for 20 some years and never had that tested, but I never felt better. Okay. Like, Isn't that strange that uh, HDL, for example, is normal after all that time of use? Yeah. Uh, well, my HDL was always low normal to mid normal. Uh, and I think that runs in my family. But I learned a long time ago that uh, niacin uh, worked very well for lowering, I'm sorry, raising HDL, uh, lowering T call, lowering LDL, uh, and lowering triglycerides. In fact, you listen to what I just said, it's perfect for all types of dyslipidemia. So I would get on, uh, I, got, I got nice in 20, 25 years ago, and I got my uh, HDL from a 35 up to about 60. Okay. What dose do you take for niacin? No, yeah, good point. Uh, you want, uh, you don't want the non-flush. Uh, you want the flush niacin. So I recommend uh, you try to get 500 uh, milligrams of uh, regular uh, niacin three times a day with your meals. Um, it, some people can't tolerate it. Uh, the, the flush will diminish as you become tolerant of it. Uh, if people can't tolerate it, I'll tell them to take a, uh, an aspirin, a baby aspirin, half hour to an hour beforehand. That will help with the flush. I'll also tell people to take uh, take that uh, that dose of, of niacin and then break it up into like six doses of 250 mil 250 milligrams through the course of the day more frequently. So that's one way to deal with the, the niacin flush. Another another thing, as I said, really is realize that you will adjust to it the longer you do use it. And if you are still one of those that has problems with the side effects with simply flushing. Which I find is a great effect as I go into the gym, they become red and, and vascular. Um, I find that the uh, the niacin at 500 mg three times a day with my meals is where I was dialed in and got my HDL from 35 up to over 60. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's very clear. Thank you so much, Jeffrey. Thanks. You're welcome. All right, guys, well, do this next. Click on one of these thumbnails to learn a ton more about TRT and hormone optimization. Thanks.